Hello my friend and welcome to this random highway off-ramp in the middle of nowhere Wyoming. I'm on a road trip and I'm making this first impressions video about the Suray series of cinema lenses called the Nightwalker series and my first impression is that they are amazing. So right out of the gate, you may have seen that I recently made a video using the Siru new 35 millimeter. I'm probably gonna switch back and forth between Siru and Sure. I get them mixed up from time to time, but that lens was awesome. I was super excited that they reached out for me to try that because I had not loved my first experience with a Sure lens, which was a 50 millimeter 1.3 anamorphic. But now I'm getting to try these Nightwalker 35 24 and 55 millimeter T 1.2 lenses and they are beautiful. It's always important to clarify, I am not being paid to say anything nice. I did receive these lenses as a part of the review. However, there is no expectation that I am going to speak positively, exclusively about them. And in fact, there are a couple of weaknesses. Those weaknesses are to be expected at the incredible price point but there are weaknesses and I will briefly talk about them in this first impression. So as briefly as I possibly can, here is my first impression. These are T1.2, which has made me almost miss having full frame, but with the native X mount at T1.2, they give me almost a full frame bokeh, which is incredibly beautiful and really exciting as someone who hasn't shot full frame video in a very long time. And with both the manual geared declicked aperture and focus rings, I am having a ton of fun creatively that I haven't had in a long time because using the Sigma 18 to 35 is more like a workhorse. It's, it's definitely more of a work oriented lens for me. It's something that is somewhat clinical and it's not as creative for me. This set of cinema lenses has felt incredibly creative and exciting and inspiring for me to shoot again. And I know that this is always difficult to communicate in videos, but the soft aspects of these lenses is by far one of my favorite parts is they are just fun to use. They're fun to shoot with. And I've really enjoyed the experience. At the early bird release point right now, these can be had for 309. And I think when they go full retail, they'll be 349. And that's the next point is that at this price point, you can hardly buy any lenses at all, let alone lenses that have really great character, really great image, great color without being flawed. Because I've used some of the incredibly affordable Mikey lenses or cinema vintage options available, and there are definitely shortcomings with those that come at the way extreme cheap price point. And these are inexpensive without feeling cheap to me. Also, as someone who travels quite a bit for my work, I love how small, lightweight, and compact they are. I can easily fit the Trio kit into my bag. Usually when a lens gets more expensive or higher quality, the size starts to grow as well. And these have managed to stay affordable, small, lightweight, compact, and quality all at the same time. And especially when we're talking about T1.2. That's another thing is that as soon as you start getting lower in apertures, it becomes difficult for them to maintain a small size. Now, before I move on into the actual characteristics of the lens, I'm actually going to interrupt myself to introduce my friend Blaze Pivovar, who you may have seen his channel as well. He's also a video Fuji filmmaker, and he has a different perspective because I tend to do lightweight run and gun exclusively. I'm always on the road and these are always getting thrown in a backpack and coming with me wherever I'm going and rarely ever in a cinema environment. Where Blaze does much more work that is much more cinema oriented with interviews, with lighting kits, and he is going to speak to you for just a minute about his experience in using these lenses as well for just a minute. 
Hello friends, John asked me to take part in this review by sharing some of my thoughts on these lenses as well. And so I wanted to primarily speak towards interview context as well as music videos and live music capture, as I know that you guys are probably filming in a lot of similar environments to that. I think they introduced some subtle character to the image that was really nice, but it wasn't too dramatic. Some vintage lenses that I've used seem to have too much character and it doesn't really end up feeling very versatile. While some of these more stylized lenses might work for a specific project, I definitely want to own lenses that will work in a variety of scenarios. I like that the image coming off of these lenses still feels clean, but isn't as crisp as my Sigma Art series lenses that I use most of the time. The bokeh is nice, and at f1.2 it has a very shallow depth of field on crop sensor cameras. I think it's super fun that these lenses introduce just a little bit of character. I found this mainly in flares. I know on the Sigma Art series lenses, I rarely get kind of creative flares. And in trying these out in scenarios with harsher light and backlight, I was able to get some um, really subtle but nice flares um, that I feel like really added to the overall character of the image. For some interview projects that I have coming up, I get really excited about having the 24 or 35 on my A cam and then having the 55 on my B cam. I think the ability to film wide open at T1.2 I think will be a super fun option for some really shallow depth of field as I'm often limited to f2.8 on my B cam when using the Sigma 24 to 70. I think nailing precise focus is also aided by the super long focus throw. I'm sure John touched on this, but some photo or focus by wire lenses, it feels like that if you move the focus just a millimeter, the entire focus plane will jump kind of several feet at a time, which I find definitely tricky for shooting wide open in interview settings. When it comes to music videos and also live music capture, the ability to film at T1.2 is very nice as these often can be in lower light settings. I honestly kind of forgot how fun it is getting to film with manual focus and these performed so well. Even when you slightly miss focus, it looks so much more forgiving as compared to autofocus pulsing. I have found some vintage lenses to be very hard to focus. The ring just isn't super smooth, probably because it's a photo first lens and this kind of tends to introduce some weird shake and jerk into the image as I'm trying to focus but then my hand instead of being on the body is on the end of the lens and just the footage doesn't end up looking great. I found these incredibly smooth to operate by hand. I think you could also use a follow focus very easily with them as they are already geared and the long focus throw and incredibly smooth ring I think makes shooting handheld super fun. While you could go the vintage lens direction and add gears and then a follow focus to help smooth out that focusing, we then run into vintage lenses often being different sizes and weights with different front element threads, which makes adding filtration more cumbersome. Your camera package is just going to need to get larger and more complex, which for me sort of defeats the purpose of filming with these smaller compact manual lenses. All of that is even before we get to price and the hassle of sourcing quality vintage glass. Well, obviously we can only test so many things in a first impressions video. I am super excited to use these lenses on projects that I have coming up. They feel like such a solid option for the price. If you were looking for affordable native X mount, manual focus lenses with subtle character and a super shallow T 1.2 aperture, I think these are a really solid option. So thanks again for having me, John, and I will send the video back to you. Okay, so now you heard what Blaze has to say. Let me talk just quickly about the negatives first. And the first negative that I experienced is the color fringing or the aberration that happens. And that's going to happen when you start to save costs on lenses because typically those are prevented by coatings and other elements that get more expensive. So there is a green and a purple fringe that happens when you over or under focus and it alternates between green and purple. Blaze and I found this and it was interesting. I reached out with Sure, confirmed that this was in the lens, and they did say that this is a cost-cutting measure, and it's one of the things that you'll have to live with. However, it's not something that I even noticed until the most extreme situations. So to me, it's not a big detraction. The next thing was that the focus markers didn't appear to be perfectly accurate, but I actually was told by Sure that they do believe that this will be fixed and that when lenses are shipped, they will be accurate. Also, the focus markings are only in meters, which for me is not terribly problematic because it's more about the feel than it is about actually reading the markers. I'm not concerned about it. 
However, it is only in meters. There is no feet markings. And also, the markings currently on my sample lenses are not accurate, but I am told that they will be shipped accurately. And the last one is a slight vignette on at least the 24 millimeter. I'm having a harder time discerning if it is on the 35 millimeter and the 55 millimeter. But the reason this is a first impressions video is because it's hard for me to make out all these details when I haven't spent a ton of time with the lenses yet. But I have spent enough time to say that the 24 mil appears to periodically have a vignette. Um, you may even see it right now. And, and I shot with and without ND and I experienced it in both cases. So it doesn't appear to be that it's only when I'm using an ND. So that's something to note as well. But, but really those three things for me right now are the only weaknesses. Then there are subjective things like maybe you want the focus ring or the aperture to be tighter. I like how they are, honestly. The aperture is a little bit tighter, which is nice. I, I could even use it potentially a bit tighter, but I could see how if you're using geared follow rings that you actually want it to be on slightly looser, but like still flexible side. But, but I think if it could go a touch tighter, that would be nice because sometimes it does just get bumped and it changes. Um, but if I had a geared ring on there, it probably wouldn't happen. And then the focus is incredibly smooth, like butter, um, which is really nice and it's really long. I think it's probably about a 270 degree focus throw. Um, so that feels nice. You can still focus all the way front to back in one turn of the hand if you're focusing by hand. But those sorts of subjective things to me are difficult for a review like this. Now let me quickly cover also what I love the very most. and. First of all, it is just the nature of shooting with these manual lenses. You feel creative when you're doing this compared to using autofocus lenses. Um, it's hard to articulate, like I said before, but, but you feel it. And then the other thing is that the color and the rendition of the image is different than clinically sharp, perfect images, but it's also not uncontrolled, like sometimes using very, very cheap lenses or vintage lenses. And that's also maybe hard to articulate unless you've used it, but there are characteristics that are great and awesome that you want to have in an image. And then there's sometimes unpredictable character in lenses that honestly causes more problems than it does more joy. And these lenses have character, they have something in the image that is more than just the traditional sharp glass, but they aren't unpredictable. Now I mentioned sharpness right there at the end and, and let me just say, these lenses are tack sharp in my experience. The, the edges and the corners may be not perfectly sharp, but when you're looking at cinema glass, you probably want character over perfect sharpness in the corners. And to me, these are sharp at the center. They are sharp to me all the way probably out to the edges of the image, uh, but then maybe up into the corners you lose a tiny bit of that possibly, but. Honestly, it's nothing for me that I would be bothered by. I, I really love the look and, and there's nothing about the sharpness or the vignetting towards the corners that, that has bothered me in editing two weddings up to this point and just some fun personal footage as well. Now back sort of to the note of the character of the lens. How about the consistency of it? The consistency of these lenses is good across the set as far as I've experienced. Again, that needs to be saved for a full length review, but I can speak again to the point of the flaring as for the character and the flaring has been well controlled. It hasn't been anything uncontrollable, which again is the name of the game is, is can you control those imperfections? Do you know when they might happen and care, good character happens when you know sort of where those happen and, and that they aren't going to happen at uncontrollable times in a way that ruins your image. I'm losing the sunlight here. I'm standing in a pile of mosquitoes and ants. And let me just finish by saying that I am more than happy with these lenses so far. I definitely am excited to see continually what Sure does in the X mount. And I definitely am happy to have a set of these for me. Now, when it's who these lenses are for, I think it's somebody who might already be looking for a manual focus cinema experience. If you're someone committed to crystal clear image and using autofocus, these probably aren't for you. But if you want to try out a set of cinema lenses, you use multiple cameras on commercial sets or weddings, then these I think might be a great fit for you. 
They are incredibly affordable. I'm really excited about them. Thank you so much for watching this video. That's all I have to say. If you have questions, leave them below because I think I might end up making a full review after I feel more comfortable with these. For now, I'm excited about them. My experience so far has been awesome. I have yet to have anything that would detract me from wanting to own these lenses myself um, moving forward. And overall, my review thus far is positive. But please, let me know if you have questions. I hope to help. Comment down below. Catch you in the next video. Peace, my friend.